Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. God is good.
Bless your name, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Amazing grace has been the sound that saved a wretch like me. praise and honor your name, Jesus. Thank you for your goodness, Lord. Thank you for your blessings, God. Lord, we honor you today. King of kings and Lord of lords. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Our forever Savior, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Are you okay today, buddy? You're hugging on to your mama. I thought maybe you was really, really in need of a hug today or something. 
Are you in really, really need of a hug today? <laughs> Does anybody need a hug today? Raise your hand. I do, I do, I do, I do. I'm All right, somebody go hug the people that have their hands up. Isabel, Isabel, hug, 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 hug. Somebody go hug the people that need a hug. Chris didn't raise her hand, but I think she needs a hug. Oh, yeah, I would. I had one, but I could. Chris, you gotta come hug you again. Okay. Hug us. 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 She's doing the mission, so y'all get whatever you're going to give to the missions. Just go. Just go around. Just go around. And if they don't, I'll come and send that to me then. I will uh, have something. I just got to do that. And we'll put stuff in it. If they have it, not, then they'll just have it. So this right here is a hug free zone? <laughs> no, it is not. <laughs> we we, we are a hug free zone. This is a hug free zone. We're a hug free zone. Well, yeah. <laughs> thank you, God. Somebody say thank you, God. Thank you, God. We don't take anything for granted. The Lord is good. Before, uh, before we split up here just for a second, this was written by the missionary in Cambodia, and I thought it was really good, so I'm going to read what the missionary in Cambodia wrote. He said, according to my information, the youngest person to die of coronavirus, or coronavirus so, for, so far is a 36-year-old person. So us geezers with health conditions make up about 90% of all the fatalities. Relax. Chill out. Don't believe the lie. The death rate is only 3.5. In reality, probably less than 0.1. Most mild cases in China, virtually all the young, went totally unreported. Same over all the world. Here in Cambodia, it's too hot for the virus, it dies. Yes, some people in Thailand got it, but they got it because they have air conditioners. Turn the thermostat to 80 degrees and be happy. Shut the CNN off, and just for your information, uh, 32 million cases of, I mean, yeah, 32 million cases of influenza this year so far, with 310,000 people put in the hospital. And 18,000 people died in the U U.S. alone, according to the CDC website. 120 cases of coronavirus in the U.S. so far. Stop panicking and stop listening to the news. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. It's just yeah. Scary. Um, one of the things in the uh, testimony time is uh, Joel said that he was thankful and his his family was thankful for the uh, new van. Uh, but what he didn't say is he was thankful that the pressure of not having a vehicle is gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true, true. The pressure of trying to sell the truck is gone. Yeah. Sometimes we, 
we see one thing and we praise God for it, but there's other things that we maybe uh, just overlook or take for granted, and we, we always need to be thankful for those things. Amen? So, um, we haven't prayed for my car yet. Uh, Rick hadn't seen it until just today. So we, we have two cars we need to pray for today. Yes. And we are getting started a little late, but that's okay. Anybody got anywhere you've got to be? See you later. I'm free all day. I'm free all day. You're free all day. All, day, huh? <laughs> all right, y'all can go to your whatever places you've got to go. I want to thank all the people that are taking the time to teach. George, thank them. That are teachers. Thank the teachers. Thank you. Thank you, teachers. She can sit and listen. She, she can okay. listen, or she can do uh, with Lily. You want to do it with us? Both, both, of, both of them yeah. are lessons. Don't try to catch up. Okay, both, okay. Of, both of them are lessons. Okay. Okay. I am uh, still uh, trying to get into the groove of Lent. And I know some people don't uh, don't care about Lent, and that's okay. And some people um, <clears throat> give up Lent for Lent, but that's okay too. Uh, to me, it is kind of like a countdown to the resurrection. So I am focused on that countdown. Uh, trying to prepare myself, my heart, my life, my mind for the time of the Lord's uh, resurrection when we celebrate his resurrection, which is, as far as the Christian uh, calendar, it is the most important day of the year. Uh, that day <clears throat> reminds us of his death, but more than that, it reminds us of his victory over death in that he rose from the dead and we get to participate in eternal life. Praise God for that. During this time, a lot of people will <clears throat> try to double down on their scriptural reading. <clears throat> They'll try to read various passages or specific passages of scripture to get their their mind and focus on the Lord. However, the Bible is not like reading. It's not like reading. There's a cast of thousands in the Bible. There's brutal murders, sordid sexual affairs, manipulations, extortions, and story after story, which relates to us how touched all of us are by the sins that began this, this entire process. You know, Adam and Eve sinned, and out of that sin came the stain on every single one of us. And Romans 3.23 tells us that all people have sinned, and all people were therefore separated from God. But without the rest of the story, that would kind of be a little hopeless. Without knowing the end of the story, we would have nothing but despair. We're touched by the sin. Sin is all around us. In fact, it's easy. Any human being would probably fit into this category. But it's easy to see the sin in others. Kind of hard to see it in ourselves. <clears throat> One of the things that helps us to, the, to, to see the sin in ourselves is to focus on 
the cost of our salvation. The cost of our salvation was the death of the Lord. The Apostle Paul sums up this desperate situation in Ephesians 2 and 12, where he says, without hope and without God in the world. That's what the world without God and without Jesus is. Totally without hope. There's no answer. Listen, every, every religion out there is trying to find a way to help people get rid of this stain. Every religion is trying to do this. But there is only one that takes care of it, and that's Jesus. Throughout the entire narrative of the Bible, there are continued hopeful promises that appear. And the Bible continues to tell us various things. I'm going to read a couple of them. Isaiah 11, 10, if you want to turn there. <clears throat> and if you want to, if you get there before I do, go ahead and stand up and read it. Isaiah 11 and 10. I'm also going to turn to Isaiah 42 and 4. But Isaiah 11 and 10 is the first one that I'm going to read here. Then in that day the nations will make supplications to the root of Jesse who will stand as a signal for the people and his resting place will be glorious. Amen. Amen. So the whole world is going to have to come to terms with this Jesus Christ. The whole world. Isaiah 42 and 4. He will not fail nor be discouraged till he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands shall wait for his law. Then in Romans 15 and Matthew 12. Romans 15 and Matthew 12. <coughs> Romans 15, verse 12. If you get there, you can read that. Romans 15, verse 12. It says, and again, Isaiah says, There shall be a root of Jesse, and he shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, in whom, or in him, the Gentiles shall find hope. Somebody say hope. In him, the Gentiles will find hope. Matthew 12, 21. Both these scriptures are referring back to Isaiah, which is... Wonderful to see that the New Testament puts everything on the Old Testament, continuing to relate it and show us that all things are connected. And in his name, Gentiles will trust or will hope. In his name, Gentiles will hope. All stained people, all fallen people, all people that are in this world that have made whatever errors and mistakes in their life can only find hope for the future in Jesus. He gives us hope for the present, that we are not alone. He gives us hope in that we are loved. He gives us hope in that we have a purpose he gives us hope even our pa over our past. Isn't it amazing that God always redeems the past? That he somehow works out even the things that are stained in the past and gives us a better understanding and a better meaning as time goes on? Our failures are proved by God not to be greater than him, who can transform those into hope. When I speak of hope, I don't mean a desire that may or not be fulfilled. I speak of a hope that is certain. Jesus is real and he's true. 
What's, what's one of the things we all do whenever we do make a mistake, whenever we do fall, whenever we do fail? What is one of the things we do? Well, we run to Jesus and we ask for forgiveness. At least that's what we should be doing. Because Jesus is the only one that can forgive us. Oh yeah, we can talk to somebody and they can make us feel a little bit better. Or, or they can forgive us. But getting forgiveness from Jesus is final. And it's complete. And it's whole. <clears throat> we know that when Jesus forgives us, that we're reconciled back with God. That separation from God is restored. You know, I think one of the best examples of the love of God is to watch a mother and see how maybe she's disappointed in her child, but if her child is running up to her uh, after they've done something wrong, she doesn't say, don't, don't come near me, I don't want to hug you. Don't, don't, don't get near me, you, you, you've got a stain on you. No, the mother pulls that child up and loves that child anyway because it is that love that brings the hope, the reconciliation, that things will be better. And that's how Jesus is with us. He forgives us. And he forgives us completely and totally. And he does that because of the cross. You see, the cross is where the work took place. We think of the cross as being an instrument of death, but try thinking of it as an altar where Jesus was laid upon so that he could redeem the whole world. <clears throat> He's the sinless Son of God, dying to pay the penalty for all of our sins and then rose from the dead so that he might give us the eternal hope, which is eternal life. Paul says in 1 Timothy 1, Jesus is our hope. He says in another place that if Jesus did not raise from the death, we are of all men most miserable. Because if there is no Jesus... If there was no death, if there was no resurrection, then we would just die, and that would be the end of it. In Titus 2.13, the Apostle Paul said Jesus is the blessed hope. He didn't just come to bring hope, he is hope. So as we approach Easter and we meditate on Jesus... Let's be grateful. Let's be thankful for the hope that he has given us. The hope that he has brought us. The hope that our sins are forgiven. The hope that we have all joy, all peace. Nothing can be destroyed if Jesus has touched it. Because if Jesus touches it, it has eternal value. One scripture says that Christ in us is the hope of glory. Did you ever think that God put a lot of hope in you? That he's put a lot of faith in you? <clears throat> that you will accept not only Jesus Christ as your Savior, but that you will accept the responsibility to pass that on to others? If you're a parent, the first person you pass it on to is your children. And then as a human being, you pass it on to other human beings in the world. You pass it on to friends. You pass it on to co-workers. You pass it on even to strangers that you might meet here and there. I think it was our president who said it a few weeks ago that sometimes when you meet a person in a public place it may not be possible for you to pray for them right there it may not even they may not even welcome prayer right there but what's to stop you from walking out of that place praying for them what's to stop you from saying Lord help me or help them 
to overcome whatever it is that they're dealing with. <clears throat> no, it's it's just Heather probably blowing for her husband. It is? Oh, okay. Okay. Peter, 1 Peter, chapter 1, verse 3 says, Praise be to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, in his great mercy. He has given us a new birth into the living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power under the coming of that salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. What's the first thing that you'll do when you get to heaven? Anybody want to share that? What's the first thing you'll do when you get to heaven? You're going to thank him? Okay. <laughs> Funny, huh? What? I'm gonna be like, wow. You're gonna be like, wow. He's like, I made it. Oh, I made it. You were nervous this morning. Where's my janitorial position? So, you walk in this morning, take your Bible with you. All the bags and everything, and I walk in like. Did somebody leave us? Did you think it was the rapture? I thought her camera was about to pop out the closet. My dad used to say, one of the first things that will happen to you when you get to heaven is you'll be surprised you made it. <laughs> you go, well, praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Another thing that, <laughs> that some of us probably will do is we'll look for our loved ones. Some family members maybe that have gone ahead. We want to be reun reunited with them. Uh, it, it, I think it's a given that we're going to tell Jesus, or it should be a given that we're going to want to see Jesus. That line's going to be long. <laughs> That's going to be a long line. Uh, at Christmas time, I always pull out this video that I heard a few years ago. Uh, and it's about going to the mall and there's a long line to see Santa. But she sings in this song, Where's the Line to See Jesus? That's the line she wants to be in. And so, yes, we, when we get to heaven, we're going we're gonna to be excited and we're going to be overjoyed and we're going to thank Jesus. We're going to give him a big hug. We're going to give him some good kisses because we're, we're grateful that he did this for us. And we're going to see others. We're going to see other loved ones, other family members. And it will probably not set in or sink in at, at least for a, a, a couple of millennials, that we're going to be here forever. <laughs> we're going to be, yeah, boy, <laughs> we're going to be there forever, hallelujah. You should have seen his smile this morning. He, he, he kind of reminds me a little of me, a little, little, little grumpy. <laughs> uh, but when they gave him that donut, he turned into a happy boy. I mean, he, he gave me one of those... Uh, teeth smiles, donut smile, boy. That's what it's going to be like in heaven. We're going to get to heaven and we're going to see all the wonderful blessings of God and we're just going to be overjoyed by it. We're going to maybe be only able to smile. We have a living hope, a living Jesus who is alive. He's transforming us. It takes little by little you're not the same as you were yesterday, and you're surely not the same as you were 10 years ago. Nope. So there's transforming that takes place, transforming of our hearts, our minds, our actions. Every day something changes about us because we have now walked with Jesus. We, we begin to understand the price of forgiveness, and we understand what real forgiveness means when we forgive others. Christ's sacrifice permeates our heart. The more we walk with Him, 
the more we lay down our own desires and we begin to serve others. You know, I read a story this week where they said the church has got to get to the place where they stop thinking that the church is about me. The church is not about me. It's about Jesus. It's not about what I get. It's about what I can give. How can I serve others? How can I serve my neighbors, my family, or even the stranger on the street? Sometimes we're tempted to just look at a person on the street and give up. But we need to be reminded that Jesus never gives up. That he's always there and he's always faithful. Even the mundane, the painful, the stressful events that try to take away our hope, Jesus gives us new hope, fresh every day. The world doesn't have it. Human beings need it. Those who are abused, addicted, those with illnesses or broken relationships, those people all around us need hope. And it is up to us to get it. Saturday, I believe it was, that Fred Morrison passed away. Fred Morrison, you don't know. But I know Fred. I didn't know him as well as others did, but I knew him. He was the pastor of the Foursquare Church in Dallas for 40 years. He was the kind of a person that believed in this hope so much that he taught everybody to be people of hope and give others hope. And his church was called Restoring Hope. Wednesday night, as people were hearing the news that he was not doing very well, the entire church went and had church on his front yard to tell Fred, thank you, Fred, for pointing us to hope. We still have hope. And as Fred was transitioning to the new life in Jesus, his congregation poured onto Facebook and thanked God for this man who had showed the hope of Jesus to them. We all need to be that kind of people, don't we? That, that we restore hope all the time, every day, everywhere we go because we know a Jesus who is alive who brings hope who is hope and who keeps us hopeful would you bow your head with me this morning Lord forgive us when we fail forgive us when we forget Lord forgive us when we don't have enough hope Restoring us, like Fred taught, restoring us the real hope, the hope of Jesus, that we might be people of hope, and that we, Lord, would be walking in our daily lives, always quick to bring hope to that situation. Help us, Lord, even for those people that we might meet that are not interested in prayer, that we would be able to stop and pray, even if it's only silently, Lord. That the hope of Jesus would come alive all around us, kind of like a force field, Lord, that invades everyone else's space, the space of hope. Let us be your hopeful people here on this earth as we, Walk through it in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray that today you will go forth and somehow share hope with others, okay? Have a good day in Jesus.